Hello everyone, hope you are doing well. Today we are going to talk about PC Part Picker and how to use it while planning your PC build. Now, PC Part Picker is one of the most essential tools that you can and you probably should use while planning your build. The link is pcpartpicker.com as you can see. Now, when you land on the home page, the first thing you'll see are some featured builds. Uh, this will be different when you open up the page. We'll talk about the system builder later because I'd like to explain it in much detail and I want you to know what you're doing when you do open it up. So we'll start with build guides and completed builds. So I will open them up on the build guides page. Uh, what you're seeing is that if you want a pre-decided list of parts for various budgets, as you can see, these are all different budgets and they're using different kind of parts. So these ones are made for gaming and streaming at the same time. So uh, the parts are capable enough that you can stream while gaming. Uh, the bottom ones are for gaming. So you can get a decent performance while gaming on this. These are budget ones as you can see. While uh, you can stream but I'm pretty sure that you might have some performance issues with the stream. So it's totally up to you what parts you use, how much budget you have. Now, for example, if you like this build, right? If you like this build, i7-9700K and an RTX 2080 Super, uh, you open it up. What you're seeing here basically are the parts that they have used. An explanation for why the parts have been chosen in this specific build. Now, uh, for each and every single thing, they have explained why they are using what they are using, right? What you see here is the build list, like what the parts they are using, how much they are costing as per the uh, online prices on various sites. The prices will vary depending on where you are from. And now if you, for example, like this list very much and you want to use this as a baseline for how you'll be building your PC but you want to change up a few things for example you want to go with only 16 gigs of RAM and you want some more storage or less storage for example so what you can do is uh, press customize this part list so this will take you to the system builder and that's where you will be able to edit the part list now as I said we'll go to system builder later and I'll show you how it works. So don't worry about it. Now, next up, we have completed builds. Now, these are the builds that various users of PC Part Picker have completed and uh, they'll be posting the pictures of the rigs to show you how they have built them up and what they look like. One of the interesting features of this site is that you can select a specific part. For example, I want to see builds that have an RTX 2080 Ti in them so that's what i'll do and you as you can see i have various build lists here which i can see have an rtx 2080 ti in them now these are the parts that they are using you can also comment and ask the user about any queries you might have regarding the build or to just appreciate their work because I'm pretty sure that will make their day. Last is the product section in the PC Part Picker site. But uh, I don't think that I'll have to explain this to any one of you. Because that's pretty simple online shopping. So let's get to the system builder. So okay, this is the system builder UI. Uh, what you're seeing here is uh, a link first of all. Now this link is unique. So whatever parts you select here. And if you want to share these parts with someone else, what you can do is copy this link and you can send it to someone else and they can see what parts you have selected. So if you have some queries or something, you can definitely uh, send this link to them. Don't send this link because this won't work. Okay, so send this link and they'll be able to see the parts that you have chosen. And if you have any queries or uh, anything, uh, you can solve it like that. This is the history tab. Uh, for example, if you removed a part previously, then you can go here and see what parts you have removed previously. Now compatibility. This green bar here that you see 
This shows whether two parts that you have selected are compatible with each other or not. For example, if you have chosen a CPU and a motherboard, but if they are not compatible, then this bar will turn red or something, I guess, and it'll tell you that this might not be compatible so you might want to change that and this is the estimated wattage we'll get to that later now as you can see there's a whole list of parts you can select here so that you don't miss out on anything there are some parts that are essential for your build without which it won't even work and there are some other ones that you can leave behind unselected if you don't require them now starting with cpu you can select from a lot of options when you're planning to buy a CPU, what you focus on are the number of cores, core count. Now, uh, if you don't know what the core count of your current machine is, what you can do is go to task manager, open the performance tab and here, as you can see, you can see the number of cores your processor has. This is the name of your processor and these are the number of cores available in your processor and logical processors means threads that means that this processor has two cores and four threads that's what this means so what you're seeing here is the core count so when you're upgrading you want to at least double the amount of cores that you have in your current machine right so for example if i am looking for a processor and I do CPU intensive tasks then what I should go for is a higher core count for example as you can see my current core count was 2 uh, we have 6 cores 8 cores and 12 cores processor here now as per your budget you can go with any of these the AMD processors that you see they come with a cooler a stock cooler as they say these are the coolers that come with the AMD processors depending on the price range from here to here the intel processors on the other hand they don't come with a cooler so for example if you were to choose an intel processor here i7 9700k let's go with that one for right now then you'll definitely have to choose a cpu cooler now these are aftermarket coolers some of the good ones here that you can get for quite a decent amount of money now if you were to go with an amd processor for example let's remove this assume that i have decided to go with the ryzen 7 3700x then what i can do is that i can skip this part if like i want to save some money i can skip this part because this does come with uh, a cooler inside the box right so if i'm trying to save money i can go with the stock cooler and it's proven that those stock coolers are good you can upgrade to a decent cooler down the line when you have saved some money for it now motherboards once you have selected your processor what will happen is that when you open that motherboard section only compatible motherboards will show up we have b450 and x570 motherboard those are the two chipsets that are compatible mostly out of the box with x570 is compatible out of the box and b450 you might have to update the bios for it what you see here is the form factor now basically form factor is the size of your motherboard now most of the people go with an ATX motherboard like that is the standard sized motherboard and the case size that people go with. Now this is the maximum capacity of RAM that you can install. Now for example as per this what it says is that it has 4 memory slots and 64 gigs of maximum RAM capacity. So what you can do is that you can have 4 16 gigs of RAM sticks over here. When you use 232 gigs of RAM sticks on this motherboard, you have two empty RAM slots and you can't use them because that's what the maximum capacity of your motherboard is. It can only hold 64 gigs of RAM. So even if you have empty slots, you won't be able to utilize them because your motherboard does not support it. So that's what you should look for. This is a high end B450 uh, gaming motherboard this is the non wi-fi version i guess so what you're seeing here is that this ones have a little bit of more features like uh, they have pcie 4 and stuff like that which is faster ssds but that's only useful if you buy a pcie 4 ssd it won't be useful if you don't buy 
a PCI 4 SSD, then you can definitely go with a B450 motherboard. We go with this motherboard. Next up, we have memory kits. Now, AMD processors are said to perform well with faster memory kits. Now, what you see here is the speed, like this one is DDR4 3000 megahertz 3200 3600 so this is Corsa Vengeance 16 gigs of RAM right so they are two sticks of 8 gigs what you can also see here is that uh, if you have a specific manufacturer in mind you can sort with that so if you go with the ones that don't have RGB uh, you'll probably save a few bucks for example check this out this one is 3600 megahertz and so is this one 8 gigs of six this one has more cast latency but since it has rgb it's more costly as you can see here what i'll also suggest is that you go for this 2x config most of the motherboards have four ram slots so when you go with this 2x config you have two more ram slots that you can fill up in the future if you want to upgrade memory capacity of your system so let's go with the neos now storage when you go to storage the first thing that you should keep in mind in today's world is that you should be using SSD. Now what you can do is that most of the people that don't do much with their computers, they can go with 128 GB SSD. So you can save some money with that. If you game a lot or if you do content creation and stuff like that, then you might want to go with 256 or 500 gigs of SSD. And for your secondary drive, hard disks are way cheaper. So like this is a 2 TB hard disk and it's like half the price of this. So that's plenty of storage. Now video card, first of all you'll have to select whether you want to go with NVIDIA or AMD GPUs. You can go with NVIDIA, tried and trusted, they'll be more expensive relatively. Now keep this in mind, the 10 series cards, some of them, the higher end cards, their prices are similar to the prices of these cards, some of these cards, not all of them, some of these cards. So you might want to take a look at the RTX series of cards. The super ones are a little bit of upgrades over the non-super cards. And then there's the TI at the top. Now as per your budget, you can select whatever card you need. What you should keep in mind while selecting your graphics card is that what is the resolution of your monitor that you have or you'll be buying. and what are the hertz of the monitor that is the refresh rate and at what fps you want to be playing so let's say we go with 2070 super a very nice budget card like 2060 super is a decent deal as well it's a very good budget card if you're trying to save a few bucks these are the higher end 2070 super cards the next thing that you should be knowing is that the amount of fans on your graphics card so the lower priced graphics cards will have two fans on them as you can see these are all two fans and then you'll come across graphics card with three fans now this will run relatively cooler you probably don't want to go with a blower style card now one fan this is not good for gaming let's go with the Strix versus tricks now case now case is one of the most important things in a build for example as i told before uh, the types that you were seeing in uh, motherboard section you'll see the same types here as well because your case determines the size of the motherboard that you can put in for now we are sticking with atx which is the standard size what you should see is that whatever case you open up you should search for its reviews and see whether the case has a good airflow a case with bad airflow will make your rig perform worse than a case with a good airflow like your temps will be higher your processor and your gpu might be throttling and you'll get bad frame rates and in the long run that is not advisable for the life of your parts that you're putting in so these are some of the tried and trusted good cases here they do come with fans you can go to the product page or from the official site and you can see how many case fans they have inside so that way you can decide whether if you need more fans or not so for example let's say we're going with the meshify c a very good case with a decent amount of airflow i think it comes with uh, two case fans before going to the power supply what you do want to take a look at is this as i told you before this is showing what the amount of 
power whatever parts you have selected as of right now are drawing so that's what it shows now as you can see we are drawing about 409 watts of power right so when you go to buy a power supply you should be buying a power supply with more wattage than what you saw in that sum total so for example as we saw 409 right as our total we can go with this 650 watt power supply you can even go with the higher ones that does not mean that you'll fry your board because that has more power no your system draws power from your power supply now the best practice while building a pc is to go with power supply which has more capacity our total is 409 right so we can go with 650 watts no issues whatsoever you can even go with 750 watts what this will do is that it will extend the life of the power supply it will be running at lower fan speeds power supplies have different efficiency ratings like bronze gold silver and titanium so we'll be going with the 650 watt power supply from corsair you can select your other peripherals from here like as you can see if you're planning to build a whole complete setup you can select a monitor from here you should definitely invest time in selecting a proper monitor because if you build a pc with a 2070 super in it and if you're driving a monitor with 1080p 60 hertz then this card here that you see is too overkill for a screen like like that because the extra frames that it creates above 60 fps those are all useless because you can't see them and you might experience ghosting so you should keep in mind what monitor you should buy with respect to a graphics card now these all stuff uh, most of you won't need it what we do have here are case fans and various accessories thermal compound yeah we forgot to talk about this now many of you might want to replace your thermal compound most of you won't but if you do want to have your temps running a little bit cooler than what they might be running at uh, with the default thermal paste then you can select a thermal compound from here uh, thermal grizzlies are said to be good so are the arctic silver now next up this is what we should be talking about now you will need a wireless network adapter if your motherboard does not have an inbuilt Wi-Fi and if you want that wireless connectivity then you'll need to buy one of these cards every motherboard which has a built-in Wi-Fi will have the word Wi-Fi in its name as you can see here ours one does next up you can select whatever peripherals you need keyboards headphones and whatnot and for example if you were trying to get a part in your list but you can't find it anywhere for example if you are trying to water cool your build and you can't find anything there then you can add a custom part write the url here or manually create it write the name part type custom url if you want to put in if you want to go to the product page later price and it will be added to your list without a picture this shows your total so when you're building so when you are building you you can keep looking at this and be sure whether you are in your budget or not as i told you we don't have any compatibility issues but they have some notes for us now as you can see so it is warning us about the power supply and the pins so if you were to select a different power supply this note might be gone so once you're done with this you can share this link with any of your friends or family and ask them if you have any query or you can go to the build a pc subreddit and ask them whether every part you have selected goes well with each other or if you could get something better for your budget so that's it folks this is how you use pc part picker and if you like this video do like and subscribe because when you subscribe it motivates me to make more and better videos for you thank you very much and have a good day